Hi, Dr. Joel here, and today we're going to learn about pulse measurements. I had some customers ask me about details, and I said I'll make a video and I'll put it here. So now you all can learn about pulse measurements on a VNA. Measurement of pulse uh, application on VNA. I'm going to start with a amplifier I have here. You can see the input power has been set to minus 25 and we see it's 25 here on the blue trace the uh, lighter purple trace is showing the output power B2 receiver is minus 4 dBm and then here we're looking at the S2 on gain is 5 dB and if I take a look quickly at the stimulus and I'll look at the sweep setup I have a linear frequency from 1 to 9 gigahertz and I have set up the CW time to be in the center of 5 gigahertz and a fixed power level. So when we go to a, if we go to CW measurement, it's fixed frequency and we see the X axis represents the time axis. If we go back, we could also go back here under the uh, source control, sorry, main, under the sweep time, we go back to the linear sweep. Now, as I change the IF bandwidth, I want you to notice that the sweep time will change. So let's change it to 1 kilohertz. And we see the sweep slows down here. If I go back to the CW time, so a sweep, sweep type CW time, now you see the start is 922 microseconds, which is the data acquisition time for a 1 kilohertz band, and the stop is 185 milliseconds. If I go back again to the linear sweep, I can see that I have less jitter in the measurement. So let's look at what we might do for a pulsed measurement. When we want to do pulse, we have this source control pulse setup. In the pulse setup, we can do different kinds of pulse. Standard pulse means doing a pulse uh, uh, S-parameter measurement, swept frequency S-parameter measurement, but just doing it in a pulse condition. I'm first going to show you pulse profile because pro pulse profile will show us how the uh, pulse shape will look. So I'll select pulse profile. I don't need to choose advanced, but if I do choose advanced, we have lots of choices of things to select. There's the pulse detection mode. I won't go into that now, but I recommend we always use wideband if we can. The F gain and path loss. Normally we leave that auto selected. The profile sweep time, I'll leave that auto selected. It's set, by the way, according to the pulse IF bandwidth. So as we saw before, the, the sweep time is related to the IF bandwidth time. And if we adjust the IF bandwidth wider or narrower, we will have a longer or shorter pulse. So this width tells me the receiver data acquisition width for the pulse IF bandwidth I've chosen. So if I go to something narrower, like 100 kilohertz, you can see it, the receiver has to be a 14 microsecond acquisition. And so obviously if my pulse profile is only 100 microseconds long, I'm not going to get very many points across the pulse. If I go up to a 3 megahertz, now it's 0.5 microseconds acquisition time. So 100 microsecond acquisition, I should get at least 200 pulses or 200 points across it. So I'll leave all that there. I'll talk about auto set width and delay later. And I'll say apply, OK. And there we've automatically set the pulse. If we look at the sweep, we have 800 points. Why 800 points? Well, this time right here takes about 400 points. And we automatically set the pulse in the middle of the sweep. So let's look at the input pulse here and I'll auto scale this. In fact, I'll scale couple to make all my scales be the same. And say auto scale all. And now 20 dB per division. And it may be a little higher than I want. 10 dB per division. We can see here, this is the shape of the input pulse. And this is the shape of the output pulse. So we can see the input and output power. And the S21 plot, which is gain, not really power. We'll put that in a new window. And this shows the shape of the S21 plot. Now, it's a little, it's quite noisy outside the pulse. And in fact, uh, sometimes you'll see this noise rise above the uh, uh, center of the S21 pulse because when there's no input signal, there can't be any output signal. And so the gain is undefined in that case. 
So that's the simple pulse measurement. Now you might ask, what if I want to have more pulse points? Well, to get, or um, I want to see more pulses. So let's take a look again at the output pulse. And if I want to see more pulses, the easiest way to do that is to just set more points. Now, it updates the start and stop time um, to allow you to see what the pulses are. So here's the first pulse. I move the marker over. And here's the second pulse at uh, um, the millisecond pulse repetition rate. If I went up to 80,000 points, Then I see a whole pulse train. So in this case, we're using the PNA receiver as a tuned receiver, and it's a time coherent, time synchronous receiver. So we can look at the pulse width directly by looking just at the time on the marker. Go back to 800 points, and we'll put the marker back at the maximum of the pulse. Now, Besides looking at the pulse power, we can look at the pulse phase. Let's look at this S21. I'll put this marker to the reference value by uh, looking at the marker value and then saying at 20 dB, I'll make my reference level 20 dB. Now, we can see a lot of noise on this measurement. That's because I've re uh, made the input bandwidth large, and so the IF bandwidth is going to let in a lot of noise. I can try changing the IF bandwidth. And if I do it here, I'll get a kind of strange result. Let's make it 100 kilohertz. See, the strange result is I still have the same number of points, but now the pulse is confined to a smaller region. So we get fewer points in the pulse, but we get more pulses because the pulse time has ex been extended. Another way to do that is if we go back to the source control, pulse profile, if I turn that pulse off, I make that 100 hertz, so now it's no longer auto-selecting the profile sweep time. And I turn on pulse profile and say apply. It automatically, again, sets the pulse to be in the middle 50% of the band, 25% below, 25% above. And now we see we have a many fewer points. And I can see the exact points by making the marker be a discrete marker. And that forces the marker to land exactly on the points. And so we can see that these points are that 7.26 microsecond increment. So one's at 101, 108, 116, 123. So those increments are set precisely by the time it takes to do the IF bandwidth. And in fact, we can have different uh, IF bandwidths to get different times. One of the things we I'm going to go back now to the source control and the pulse profile. I'll reset this to be uh, back to my 3 megahertz because I want to get more points across the pulse. And I'll say apply OK. We see a lot of pulse points there and it's quite noisy. We can also look at the phase response. And again, we can take a uh, look at the marker value of uh, 98 degrees and we can say scale reference level 98 degrees. And then we can scale it down to a few degrees per division. And the noise in the trace makes it hard for us to see any phase um, droop in this pulse. But we, can, we can't narrow the bandwidth because that will cause the uh, timing per pulse to be shortened. But we can add sweep averaging. So if we do 100 sweep averages, we can see that now the uh, noise on the phase trace, and if we go back to look at log magnitude, the noise on the log magnitude is greatly reduced. Now, also notice we have this funny point right here. We have one giant uh, higher gain point, and we're trying to understand what causes that. Well, let's see what causes that by using, uh, we'll move the markers out of the way here, and then I'll use the magnify key. If we magnify, we can see that the input power drops slightly before the output power drops. That's because we have some delay through the device. So we'll always see this spike at the end because the S21 as a function of time has power coming out after the power going in has gone away. Turn off the magnify function and again here we have the input and output um, 
power traces. So that's the basic pulse profile measurement. Let's go back and look at another measurement. Sweep, source control. Instead of the pulse profile, let's turn the pulse measurement off and we'll change our sweep type back to linear frequency and here we can see the S2 on gain and right now I'm uncalibrated and uh, we'll stay uncalibrated until we're ready to make a calibration I'll talk about some details for doing calibration under pulse measurement so one of the things that happens with pulse measurements is you can see here that we have a variation in the input power from what we started. That's because when we do a pulsed measurement we have to go into a power setting called open loop mode. And normally we would be in an internal mode that has a, a response that's controlled by an internal diode detector. But that ALC loop is too slow to respond to the pulse. So we want to go into open loop mode and it gives us a little error, but we can turn on a function called receiver leveling. And receiver leveling uses the receiver reading to set the, get the input and power of the device, or of the source. So once we have the input power receiver leveled, we get a good response. Receiver leveling takes a background sweep, and you might not want to have that background sweep. So there's a kind of trick you can do. Let's turn receiver leveling off, go into the dot, dot, dot says update source power calibration with leveling data and I'll say OK turn on receiver leveling nice flat response when I turn off receiver leveling notice that the source cal indicator has come on it's created a source calibration with that receiver leveling value and now it applies that all the time without updating the measurement so that's our receiver leveling value before we turn back on the pulse mode Let's reset our markers. We're going to couple them together. That, we use a channel coupling and we can move the marker. If we move one marker, all the markers move together. So now let's go set up the pulse measurement. We'll go to the source control, pulse setup, and you notice it automatically sets to 15 kilohertz. It sets it to the narrowest bandwidth that will still have a data acquisition time that fits into the 100 microsecond uh, period. So here we see it's 96 microseconds data acquisition for the 100 megahertz or 100 microsecond uh, pulse on time. Turn on the standard pulse, say apply, say OK, and the pulse indicator shows that we're making pulse measurements and we see a very slight change of the A1 wave, the input power. You see it's around minus 25.18 and we ask for minus 25 exactly. So we can pull that same uh, receiver leveling trick. Here we have 201 points across the span, and each point is a single pulse, so every point takes one millisecond, it's 100 microseconds on time, and 900 microseconds off time for a one millisecond time per pulse. We can try to clean up this uh, little tiny offset in our power, it's only about 0.15 dB in the A1 power, by reusing that receiver leveling trick now that we're in swept frequency pulse mode. So we go to the power, we go to the leveling and offsets key, turn on the receiver leveling, let it take a sweep, and you can see it's cleaned it up to exactly 25 dB. You can turn the receiver leveling off now and the source power calibration will update for that pulsed condition. Uh, we should talk a minute about calibration, so here to do the calibration, I'll use the Smart Cal. We'll select Calibrate Power as well as performing Guided Cal. We go next, we should select a Cal Kit. So my connectors are 3.5 millimeters, so I'll select the 3.5 millimeter Cal Kit. And then go next to do the power calibration. And this is the final thing I wanted to show you. Uh, we have the normal sensors, but to accommodate the um, duty cycle, we can actually put in a loss factor for an average power sensor. So if the power sensor is not a pulsed peak power sensor, we can go in here and just enter a frequency value. It doesn't matter what the value is. So I'll enter a value of about 10 megahertz. And then we can add a loss factor. So 10% duty cycle is a 10 dB uh, power loss.
and the average power sensor will note that its readings are always tend to be lower than the actual power and we know that the peak power during the pulse is that offset and then we can use the loss table to do that. So I won't go through the whole cal process, you guys have seen that before, but this completes the full pulsed measurement in standard pulse and in pulse profile. So that completes our initial set of measurements on pulses where we looked at pulse profile and swept frequency point and pulse measurements. Uh, stay tuned for another video where I'll be doing pulse spectrum analysis using the PNA spectrum analyzer mode. Thanks for joining me today.